This week, in an interview between music industry veteran Steve Stout and rap artist Russ, they discuss Drake going independent and away from major labels. And if that happens, they say that is the end of the music industry. No, God, please, no, no, no! Because Drake is far too big an artist to be independent, and that will topple the entire music industry. But the reality is, we've heard this down the line before, not just in the music industry. What about when Conor McGregor was going to leave the UFC? And that would mean the end of the UFC as we know it. The reality is the recorded music industry made $20 billion last year alone. Drake is simply not that big to make that much of a difference. Or is he? You see, this is not about Universal losing Drake's income is enough to sink the ship. This is about the ripple effect of what happens if Drake leaves a major and goes independent. After all, his deal with Cash Money Records, his record label, is almost up. And if he decides not to sign the next one to another major label, other artists might follow suit. And what we might see is a complete reconstruction of the music industry. So come with me and let me show you how. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Damien Keys here. So before I start, I'm very excited to announce that this week on Wednesday, I am launching my new music business academy. I cannot tell you how excited I am for that. And whilst you can't sign up today when this video goes live, what you can do is you can click the link below Stick your email in and I will get in touch with you personally to give you some more details and give you a 14-day free trial. So what have you got to lose? And I can say it's bloody exciting. Okay, so before we start, let me just say, I am not a huge fan of Drake's music. I don't listen to any Drake's music. I couldn't really name many songs. But at the same point, I do understand that he is the biggest artist in the entire world, especially when it comes to streaming. And for that, I absolutely respect what he has done. He has created his own empire and he has created a movement where so many billions of people in the world follow what he does and want to listen to his music and want to be a part of that. And that makes me want to study him even more because I don't understand him, because I do think he sings out of tune. And in my head, I'm like, if he can sing that out of tune and still make that much money and sell that many records, then he is doing something completely completely right. So this is not a case of whether I like him or whether I don't like him or whether you like him or whether you don't like him. This is a case of respect and what we can learn from what he has done. After all, when it comes to streaming, he is the master. Drake was named as Spotify's most streamed artist of the decade, and he has been streamed across platforms over 50 billion times, and that was in 2018. The guy has had more number ones than Michael Jackson, and his net worth is reported to be 180 million dollars. The dude is doing something right. So how did he become such a powerhouse? Now this is interesting because when we start to look at this, we start to see exactly why Universal are so scared to lose him. Because this is not just about the money, but also about the power and control he has. Drake understands the digital world better than any label and he moves fast to keep up. If you look at someone like PewDiePie on YouTube, it's a very similar thing. They're jumping on trends, and as a new trend comes and starts to push fast, they jump on it to get traction and momentum, which then builds that momentum and gets fast. Then they jump onto the next trend. Drake is anything but a one-trick pony, and this has allowed him to really propel himself to the top. He also understands that he needs to attach his brand to other brands and also other trends in order for him to keep that vibe of being cool and to get that attention, which is why he did a deal with Apple for $19 million. He also jumped on the gaming bandwagon and jumped onto Fortnite two years ago in order to get 500,000 people watch him play Fortnite on the first show. Drake knows that as well as getting in front of people to get that attention, he also needs the cool points, which is why he collabs a lot. He collabs with Bad Bunny and Wizkid and Skepta and The Weeknd and Kendrick Lamar. He makes sure that he's attaching his brand to other forms of cool, which makes him extra cool. And the more he does that, again, the more momentum, the more eyeballs, the more ears are listening to him at all times. 
Drake simply outpaces everybody by working harder and working faster as well as working smarter. He realizes that in order to build his credibility, he can attach his brand to all of these other people and international brands, which then builds him not just in one genre, but it takes him out of that genre and out of that city or out of that country and makes him an international worldwide success on many, many different levels. Now, when he's not getting a attention from helping and collabing other cool artists, he's taken a leaf out of the fight book game, which is he fights upwards and he champions downwards. He's looking at picking fights with the other peers who are as big, if not bigger than him. People like Jay-Z, Kanye West, Chris Brown, they've all come under the wrath of Drake as he is looking to get more attention when he's adding certain lyrics into his raps, when he's picking fights with these artists, knowing that they will respond. And all of a sudden, he's got this beef and the eyes are watching him one more time. So he's championing downwards, but he's fighting upwards. So with all that in mind, if Drake decided to go independent, independent from a major label deal and put out his own music, would that completely collapse the music industry? No, of course not. But here's the thing, the music industry is based on tradition and fear. Artists feel that they need a big label in their corner. They need that machine because it's always been that way. And as soon as a leader comes along and shows that they don't need that, all of a sudden you will start to get artists that will jump, jump ship. This has happened many times in the past. And we've seen it with artists like Jay-Z standing up and doing Tidal. But this isn't so much an issue of an artist standing up for their rights. We've seen that many times before. This is just a matter of timing. You see, we live in a follow the leader society. And if you look at Spotify, how many times a day do I hear Spotify should pay more for artists? And if artists just rebelled and didn't go on Spotify, then Spotify wouldn't exist. And artists would get paid more money for their music, which should happen. Absolutely, I agree. But at the same point, artists aren't doing that. And everybody is scared. And until someone stands up and makes a stand, and then that causes the ripple effect, until that happens, we are stuck in this situation. Even back in the day, nearly 30 years ago, in 1993, the international artist Prince wrote slave across his cheek in order to protest. And he said, if an artist doesn't own their masters, then the masters own that artist. He was standing up and saying, this is my work. I made this, I should own it but I don't. I signed it away to someone else. We've also seen a recent fight with Taylor Swift who says, look, I'm prepared to buy my work back off you, but this is my work, not Big Machine's work. And for that, she didn't win. She didn't get it, which means the record label still gets say over those masters. It means they can put that music anywhere they please. It's theirs, they own that music because that is what signing to a label is. You are saying, I will sell you my music because you are going to make it, you are funding it. So effectively it might be my idea, it might be my creative process, it's my song, but it's not my recording. So as soon as you sign that and they pay for you to go into that studio and record that music, that is not yours. And it's all very well when artists like Prince and Taylor Swift say, well, I'm gonna re-record all of my old back catalog, but you've missed the point because it was a moment in time. And that moment in time has passed and you can re-record it, but nobody wants the re-recordings. They might listen to it a little bit, but they want the original. They want that moment in time. And the labels know that. Now, back in the day when Prince was making records, it was a different game because you needed a huge amount of money to get your music out there, not because of marketing and promo, because of physical manufacturing. Who is gonna go and pay for a million CDs to get printed and all the artwork and on top of that to take that to all of the shops all over the world and collect that money. That is a colossal amount of money and it needs a machine behind. We haven't needed that for several years and we certainly do not need it now, but we have got this tradition which artists have fallen into. And if someone like Drake comes along and says, do you know what, I don't need you. I don't need any of that. I can make a track for 10 grand, 20, $30,000 
And I know I'm going to be bringing in a million, a million every year, a million every week, possibly with an artist like Drake. I mean, he could make so much money from that album or from that single. It just depends whether he wants to take that stand like someone like Prince, because if Prince was here now, you'd find he'd get a lot more traction than he did in 1993. The artists need the labels because the labels own the masters. Spotify need the labels because the labels own the masters. But the labels now need Spotify and other streaming platforms because they're that big. But the artists are the ones who can pull the rug because if they then own their own masters and the labels don't have the power, and Spotify then don't have the power because the artists can do what they want with their music, then things start to get interesting. And whilst at the moment it's a Mexican standoff with everybody waiting, looking, saying, well, I can't do anything because they will do something and it's all, everyone's got a gun to everyone else's head. It's the artist that can take that power back, pull the rug and the house of cards can come falling down. Now imagine exactly the same thing, but the artist owns the masters. They get to say where that music goes. They get to say how it's distributed. There's no rules, there's no tradition. They say, I'm gonna make this stuff up as and when I want. Now, I'm gonna make my own music industry. And at that point, whilst we're doing it on a lower level, when the big boys come in, when they come in and start doing this, all of a sudden, that really starts that ripple effect. And one artist can lead to two, and two two can lead to three and four and five. And all of a sudden, the power starts to slip from the industry. I don't believe it's that far away. Artists like Prince have been fighting for this for 30 years, but there's been rumblings from Jay-Z and Taylor Swift and Kanye West, but it takes a leader to stand up and say, I am not doing this. Look what we can achieve if we do this as artists ourselves. And from that point, who knows what will happen? So whilst this might not be Drake and this might not actually happen yet, this is not a case of what if. This is a case of when, because we know that things cannot carry on like this forever. We now know that areas of making money as musicians, going out on tour and selling merch is now becoming even tougher. Tougher for venues, tougher for artists. And it's only the top of the top who are actually making that big bucks. So it's only a matter of time before this house of cards fall down. We are all aware of that. It just means when and who will be the catalyst. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I find this stuff fascinating and I would love to hear your thoughts on it. I wanna know, this feels to me like a house of cards, but does it feel like that to you? Does it feel like this is something that you can't get in? Or all of a sudden, is the music industry starting to feel more and more fragile on a weekly basis? Let me know your thoughts, and more importantly, do me a favor, if you can like, subscribe, come and be a part of this community because I am so proud of what we're building and I'm so proud of watching you build your careers. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys soon.